so we're carrying on with this house thing again and um, the last video I was doing some vocal cut-ups I listened back I'm not really feeling them at the moment and I'm actually considering maybe getting a proper vocal on this so let's see how it pans out now what I want to do is start adding a few more musical elements but first of all I'm gonna fill in the gaps and tell you what I did I had to play around um, I've started to organize things uh, just naming these clips a little bit better I also felt the bass I wasn't really happy with it so what I've done is as well as the FM bass the operator I've layered it with my Minotaur so the Moog Minotaur so you can see what's going on here this is basically um, a recording of the bass line so that's all set up now so I basically recorded that in from the hardware that I've got and for me now that feels like it's binding the bottom end a lot better together so these are layered together and uh, I'll show you how they sound so the FM bass is basically quite high up here you can see um, so I used this EQ3 at the end to roll off everything below 186 on the Moog bass you can see here that I rolled off the, the highs as well so the two are kind of slotting together you see a bit of compression going on here so the two of them make up nice little kind of plucky bite from the FM um, the solid bottom end from the Moog Minotaur which is a real monster on the bottom end really nice and smooth as well because it's proper analog and um, that's that what else have we got um, yeah I started to work on the master a bit here and this is uh, a very common kind of chain for me and I just reduced the level uh, before it hit everything over here because it felt a little bit loud hitting into the glue compressor the settings I did quite a slow attack on there 30 the release is set to auto ratio 4 the vibe EQ which is uh, one of my favorites as you've seen before and a little bit of work here tiny little cut at 240 actually another cut at 3.2k I felt like I needed to just reduce some of the energy in that area and then uh, my end of chain mastering job here this is the uh, the L2 okay from waves so let's have a listen uh, with everything together and what I did also was to bring back the original um, musical section that I had at the very very beginning of the series and what I'm thinking about now is alternating between these you see I've got part one and part two over here so here's part one and uh, the string and then what I do is flip it So it's kind of like a musical sequence. Strip the piano back. And then back to the first part. So we've got a bit of mileage there, but definitely feeling we need to add something new. So I've loaded up another instance of the M1. Show you another little trick that I do. If I've got some chords um, like these over here, let me bring this on. So we're going to solo the M1, see what's going on. Let's change the preset first. What I'm looking for is a nice pad. So I'm thinking about some sections where we're going to take the energy down a bit and maybe have some kind of vocal on top, I'm not sure. So we want some kind of nice evolving synth pad. Let's take a look at something here. And um, that. I'm pretty confident that's gonna sound good, but look, it's too busy at the moment. So as I said, another little trick for you, let's call this pad, and uh, let's get a bit of housekeeping, pad one. So, gonna take exactly the same playing. Let's open this up, and I'm gonna take a look at uh, what's going on here, and look at these notes. Let's take this. In fact, you know, we could do this, um... actually, don't wanna get carried away here. Let me think about this. <laughs> Firstly, let me just zoom in. All right, so let me extend these for starters. All right, so the low note I'm going to bring over to the right. So as I said, I need to think about this a little bit. Um, the next chord. Okay. So the next chord I might bring in a bit earlier. 
So I might make this to the point where that other one comes in. Let's take this away. Yeah, I think that's going to be it. It looks as if that carries on. So you've got to use your brain a little bit. Let me put the click on as well. Yeah, this could be good. It's got very slow attack, by the way. Um, so that's something to bear in mind. So that's on the volume envelope. So if the attack is set quite high, it means it's a fade upwards over time. So that means the timing of the MIDI notes here. Sometimes you have to do it a little bit earlier than you would expect. I uh, need to fine tune that and play around with it. So let's bring this one here um, over. It's not registering that left point at the moment. Maybe that's to do with the fact, once again, I have to remind everybody this is Live 9 Beta. So some of the uh, features may be different on the finished release. And uh, they're working very hard to try and make sure this is good enough for the, the go live date, which I think sometime in March I, I was hearing. Um, I think that's all very public. Yeah, yeah, okay. You see what's going on here. Um, so basically we're creating some nice extended chords. I think actually I'll take this first one. Give it some space. You know, you don't always want to go right up to the next notes because it's just going to clutter things up sometimes. And um, it all depends on the envelope shape of the, uh, the synth. Now I'm wondering if it's actually all the same until the end here, isn't it? So maybe just for speed, I could take these, make a copy, just going to zoom the vertical here. So I bring this over and uh, let's have a listen. Okay, so this comes over here and then that's going to take us for the ends of that. That's part one of course. Part two is going to be a little bit different. Let me see how that feels. Yeah, it sounds nice. Let me um, take the solo off, take this off. Right, for me that attack is a little bit too slow. So I'm gonna take this earlier and uh, hopefully that's gonna sort it out. nice but bear in mind I mean I've, I've got to fix up the uh, the other part too now but bear in mind with pads that um, they're often very heavy on the bottom end so let's just take a look and see how that's flowing so you can see there's quite a lot of low end energy going to turn on the low cut sounds like it's cleaned it up let me see in the mix Bring it down a bit. You can imagine with a vocal on top that would sound nice. Um, so yeah, that's good. And we are looking for now pad two based on piano two. Let's take a look. Following the same kind of template, I could probably do some copying um, on this. Let me just bring this over though. So possibly, I can't remember, the notes might be the same. So those of you musically minded might be laughing at me at the moment going, why didn't he just copy that over? Um, but anyway, I'm just going to persevere with this. Um, no, actually, there is a reason. Definitely it was different. I remember doing the transposing, remember in part two. Um, so let's keep going. And uh, not the most exciting part of the video, but it's still important to do this for you guys to see the whole thing. You know. You have to put that effort in. Maybe actually, I'll bring this note down here. That could be quite nice. Um, we'll see. This one over here. Why don't I just grab these and drag these together for starters? That will speed things up. Uh, take this. It's going to take a bit of time. You know, when we're adding musical elements, it's almost like 
you don't want to overcook things for starters it's very common for a lot of tunes particularly these 90s ones to have like a main piano or electric piano sound or even a, a sort of kind of synth sound um, to do a kind of more stabby element a string to maybe complement it on the higher end um, and also a pad you know a pad to kind of fill out the the gaps in a way so it's very common for a pad to be there you know all of the classic old tunes uh, they tended to have a pad at some point so pad all it means is padding out the space that's where the name comes from and technically a pad um, could be even it could even be a piano or electric piano filling in those gaps as long as the notes are long and held down that's a whole kind of concept of a pad um, so it's not actually necessarily a particular characteristic of the sound uh, but we kind of when we think of a pad we do think of a certain kind of vibe something quite warm generally something quite almost kind of like a synth string of some sort um, this one feels like quite a nice hollow pad um, actually that could be quite nice that little transition there if I keep these notes the same up to here take that one up to here take this one I mean I don't know don't know if this is gonna be right um, let's bring that along here you know when you're dealing with these kind of tunes you might be thinking okay well I want something else that's a bit more interesting on the high end maybe some kind of melody like a marimba you know that's been used a lot the M1 marimba sound or a vibraphone let's come down to the second one yeah the chords are bad now that was a bit confusing there because of the notes here let's just in fact do that I'm gonna solo okay now that other one needs to come in earlier basically it's dragging out a bit too much so I think that should be it you know you're probably spotting a little bit of a pattern here Um, that's gonna sound nice in another part of the track uh, on its own uh, let me rename this pad two all right so um, that's good for some point um, you know it may be that it's more along these kind of lines you know we'd be sort of copying these elements over and um, you know giving these elements their own space coming downwards on here on the right hand side with the scenes um, so what I might do is in fact drag a copy down of part two drag a copy down of part one and in fact take out these musical elements so it's kind of speculating in terms of an arrangement um, what might go on at certain points later and then we can sort of jam between these so look, let's go take it off solo Bring these back. And then flipping into part two. Here we go. So what I'll do is at the end of this next four bars drop into part one but with the pad. Really nice subtle mood change. Let's bring the pad down a bit. And then we can flip onto the part two. There we go. And then yeah, yeah, that's good. Let's come back onto that part one with the piano and the string. There we go. So you can get a sense of uh, structurally where things may be heading it felt to me as if on that last section the transition just before we're going in there that we should have dropped maybe some of the beat elements maybe a little fill of some kind when you start having the track getting a bit more developed that's when you're going to start to think okay yeah I could have a fill here or there's a sound or something you know what I find is, is the more I hear these things the more elements come on I start to almost subliminally start thinking about what else I need so I'm really feeling I need some kind of effects 
sort of uh, maybe some kind of uh, metallic textures, washes, all these kind of things coming in. Now, um, what I might do is just show you like a complementary sound. If I duplicate the pad, which means it's going to create another instance of the M1 without me having to load it up, I'm going to take away these and I'm going to say here like mallet for starters. I've got no idea if this is going to be a mallet sound as such, but let me just. Uh, open up the M1 let's get something so a mallet like a metallic kind of sound uh, yeah we got bell and mallet let me see what we got do you know what funny enough that's almost exactly the kind of thing that I had in my head these kind of things can go great on top of pads so Um, so yeah, that kind of texture. What I'll do is I'll work on something between now and the next video, a little kind of riff. Obviously the notes were wrong there, but you know, I need to spend some time and work some stuff out. Um, and people are gonna ask me, yeah, what notes will I choose? I've got no idea theory-wise. Um, I literally will sit down, I'll get my keyboard out. I mean, I was just using the typewriter keyboard here on the, uh, the Mac, but I'll get my proper keyboard out and I'll sit and I'll work out some stuff and get it down uh, through trial and error. Okay, so I'm just listening. What I'm thinking about really, if I could instruct you guys a little bit here is, is that that pad is warm and like a bed. I want something else to cut on top. And that's why I'm thinking about using something like this mallet sound, but short notes. I'm not gonna be holding it down. I mean, the actual envelope of the sound itself is short by its, its definition of the mallet sound. You don't get sustained mallet sounds. Um, so, that's the kind of direction that I'm heading, just a little bit more kind of musical elements. And then what I do, um, so on the next video, I'll have that in place. And then what we'll focus on on the next video is probably on some of those kind of transitional effects. And that's gonna lead us probably quite nicely onto a structure. But of course, you know, I've got to think about vocal. Um, I'm thinking about maybe trying some kind of vocal thing on top. Maybe even I'll do one of my spoken word things because uh, I've done it quite a lot on my tracks where I've put on a fake American accent, pitch shifted my voice down, created like a thicker, layered trippy almost kind of clubby vibe and uh, that could work too so who knows um so that's it for the next installment and hopefully there were some helpful tips for you there and uh, i'll speak to you guys soon